basic flavour of food comes from its taste. Bitter, sweet, sour, salty, and if it's meat, umami. But far more important for flavour is the food's aroma. So, yeah, you can see, you know, you can smell that aroma coming off its top. So Jane's first step is to identify the signature components of gourmet steak aroma. She puts the pieces of steak into a gas chromatograph, which collects the aroma before separating out and measuring every component, displaying the results on a graph. Each peak is a single component that's come from the aroma that's come off the, off the steak. Probably at least 100. I would say a couple of hundred easily, but you could go up to 600 if you looked at absolutely everything that was there. There's one somewhere here. It's a very interesting compound. People describe it as rotting drains, rotting vegetables, rotten eggs. It's really got a nasty aroma, but it's required. You need to have it there to give you that nice fried steak aroma. Where do you start when you're trying to recreate something which can almost con our taste buds into thinking, mmm, delicious meaty flavour. Well, the first thing you need to do is work out which of the peaks are important, which compounds are actually giving you the, the aromas that you need. But giving a delicious flavour to processed food is more complicated than just adding those aroma compounds. In something like a steak, there are specific natural chemicals which react together during cooking, each combination generating a different aroma. Those precursor chemicals build up in meat as it matures, producing an even stronger reaction in the pan. And that's what gives a quality steak its rich gourmet aroma. It's called the Maillard reaction, and it gives all cooked foods their signature aroma. This is a real art, isn't it? Oh, it is. You need the science, you need the chemistry to understand how the flavours are generated, but there's an awful lot of art in it as well. You need to have a good nose to be able to create um, an aroma that's convincing. One man who can do that is Dr David Baines. He's worked out which of the precursor chemicals in a steak are responsible for those signature aroma peaks. To reproduce that natural flavour, he just mixes those chemicals and cooks them. First, a dash of natural ribose powder. This is the key sugar in meat. Next, some cysteine. This is the powerhouse. This produces hydrogen sulfide. Then a pinch of glutamic acid, a natural monosodium glutamate, or MSG, and some ribonucleotides. And the ribonucleotides and the glutamate are what give us umami. And that's the, the fifth. The fifth taste. taste, yes. Sweet, sour, bitter, salty. Umami. A dollop of yeast extract adds body. And uh, it won't work without the water. At this stage, the mixture has very little flavour, but that will all change after half an hour in a pressure cooker. Now, it may seem very artificial, but this lab flavour could be safer than the real thing. When you cook a piece of meat, you do get some substances formed that have been linked to cancer. They're formed from a precursor called creatine. I don't use creatine, so they're not going to be formed. As you do with a normal pressure cooker. Finally, it's time to check the results. I can smell it already. And here we have it. You see the colour formations taking place. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's pleasant or not. That has to be the beefiest beef I have ever smelled.